Hello and welcome dear friends at Lit E City YouTube channel where we discuss important works related with English literature and in this series great writers of world literature we bring certain a very important novels especially from from our examination point of view and in today's session we will discuss about like water for chocolate a novel written by Laura Esquivel the famous Mexican writer dear friends it is a novel of magic realism which which became quite popular during the early decades of the 20th century it was first published in 1989 and the setting of the novel is northern mexico during the turbulent time of the last decades of 19th century and the first few decades of the 20th century when there was a kind of civil war going on in mexico Dear friends, Laura Alicia Palomares Esquivel. She is an internationally renowned Mexican writer who is famous for her novels uh, written in magic realism genre. Now, magic realism, uh, which originated in Latin America, especially in works of writers like Jorge Luis Borja and Gabriel Garcia Marquez, it mixes. ordinary details with supernatural or magical occurrences so there is that is why this uh, title which is an oxymoron magic realism both uh, contrasting elements going side by side the complete title of this book is like water for chocolate a novel in monthly installments with recipes romances and home remedies now friends Like water for chocolate is inspired by Esquivel's experience growing up and her close relationship with the grandmother who taught her how to cook in fact it is uh, the experience of cooking the recipes she makes which is very much blended into her uh, other real life and other experiences Now there are 12 chapters in the novel and each is named after a month in chronological order so the first chapter uh, is titled January and the novel ends with the chapter titled December and in each chapter there is a recipe from Tita's cookbook Tita who is the protagonist of this novel If we look at this particular chart this will give us the summary the basic idea of this novel uh, there is one important character mama elena she is a very dominant kind of figure and she has three daughters tita who is the youngest one and the protagonist of the novel then she has rosa rosaura she is the eldest one and almost we can say copy of her mother and then there is uh, this daughter gertrude is who is a born rebel now tita has two person vying for her pedro who actually gets married to rosarua and then dr john brown who loves her uh, quite uh, we can say in uh, in depth there are also some minor characters like esperanza daughter to these two and who uh, eventually gets married to alex who is son of dr john uh, brown there are basically maids also two important characters and the whole family is de la gaza family so the setting of the novel for the most of time is a ranch which is managed by mama elena Now the novel begins as an unnamed narrator uh, tells the story of Tita's birth Tita was actually uh, born in the kitchen of her house her mother Mama Elena soon becomes a widow just after the birth of Tita and unable she is as she is unable to both nurse and manage the ranch she let Nacha who is the childless cook feed and care for Tita For Nacha and Tita, Tita's frequent tears while cooking and chopping onions are a source of entertainment. That is why Tita didn't distinguish between tears of laughter and tears of sorrow. They become one for her. 
Tita cherishes making Christmas rolls during the festive seasons because it is the time when whole family work together in the kitchen. However, her sisters Gertrudis and Rosara, they don't enjoy cooking. It's only Tita and Nacha that spend most of the time in, uh, in the kitchen making recipes. When Tita turns 16, a young man, Pedro, falls in love with her and asks her if she loves him too. It's a very, you, uh, you can say, a teenage kind of romance. The attraction of the first sight, Tita shyly confesses her love and Pedro promises her that he will love her till his death. Now, Tita tells her mother about Pedro, but Mama Elena refuses to listen, reminding her of their family tradition, according to which the youngest daughter stays unmarried to take care of her mother. So she tells uh, Tita that drop any kind of marriage because you have to remain unmarried. Mama Elena is a very strict and uh, dominating parent and she refuses to speak to Tita for days because Tita tries to counter argue against this tradition. Now Pedro still comes to the house with his father with the marriage proposal for Tita but Mama Elena declining his proposal says that if he wants to marry he can marry the oldest daughter Rosarua instead. Now, to the surprise of his father, Pedro gives his consent to this proposal. Tita is shocked when Nature tells Tita what has happened, but she also informs that she has overheard Pedro telling his father that he agreed to marry Rosarua so that he can be close to Tita. Now that night Tita stays awake weeping and crocheting the wedding bed spread that she had begun when Pedro first declared his love. Unwilling to let it go to waste, she still hopes that she will have Pedro for herself. Then Mama puts Tita in charge of wedding banquet as a punishment because Tita skipped, didn't attend Rosarua's engagement party. While preparing wedding cakes, Tita cries into the batter and uh, she weeps so profusely that Nacha has to remind her that the cake will go uh, waste if she don't stop uh, weeping while uh, beating the batter. Nacha finishes the icing, licks some of it. She is also overcome with desire, remembering all of the family's weddings and she is waiting for, uh, we can say, her own marriage and instantly she falls sick. This is now the magic element uh, in the very realistic uh, detailing of the story. Now, uh, at the wedding, Tita congratulates Rosarua and Pedro. Pedro pulls her near, telling her he has married Rosarua only to remain close to Tita. When the guests eat the cake, they all are filled with the same longings for the lost love and there is a mayhem caused by vomiting and tears. Everybody who has taste, uh, tasted the cake, uh, he or she has fallen sick. Some are vomiting meeting some are weeping and obviously mother elena is very much disturbed by this chaotic scene when tita returns home from the marriage venue she finds nacha dead in her bed mama elena blames tita for poisoning the cake to ruin rosarua's wedding and gives her a severe beating a year after the wedding, Pedro brings Tita roses as she has uh, completed one year as the head cook of the ranch. But this basically makes uh, both Rosua, Rosarua and Mama Elena quite angry. Rosarua is actually pregnant with her first child. Mama Elena commands her to throw away the roses, but Pita uses them in making a particular recipe, rose petal sauce, which has been taught to her by her grandmother. 
eating the sauce gertrude is is affected supernaturally once again uh, the recipe um, creates a magical effect and feels a rush of sexual desire thinking of a captain of a rebel troop which he has seen some days before tita also feels same erotic pleasure with each bite as if pedro is making love to her in fact it is only pedro tita and gertrude is who have enjoyed the dish rosa rosa and mama elena they have uh, refused to uh, eat it more because they didn't like it gertrude is try to calm her body heat uh, and takes the shower but the water evaporates and a pink rose smelling cloud forms which is once again a magical happening attracting the notice of yuan alexandres the rebel captain who is miles miles away from the scene but he comes um, on the horseback coming there he lifts her naked onto his horse and the horse gallops away Tita and Pedro who have witnessed the scene they tells mama Elena that the rebel federal troops kidnapped Gertrude Now Tita has great affection for Rosario's son Roberto because actually she delivered the baby there was mama was there mom, uh, to fetch the doctor Pedro was also absent so she Tita remembers her grandmother and delivers the baby in absence of any doctor even mama Elena the lo- local do- doctor when he arrives dr john brown and uh, he congratulates uh, tita for such wonderful work and uh, he is also fascinated by the alluring beauty of tita john is actually a widower and he is raising his son alex alone now john begins to pay regular visits to the house because he finds the company of tita very comforting and rosarua she is not able to lactate to produce milk and the vet nurse is killed in a bizarre accident tita miraculously nurses the baby with her milk but she keeps it secret from both rosarua and mama elena because she knows they, she will not be allowed to do so in their uh, Uh, information tita continues to breastfeed roberto in secret in conspiracy with pedro the secret intensifies their love while rosario stays in bed for the most of time at the baptism mama elena can feel the vibes between tita and pedro and decides to send the couple away with the child tita is obviously devastated by the news the rebel suddenly raids the ranch to take away anything valuable but they are in awe with the maternal authority of mama elena however before going they kill all the pigeons from the dove cote but this again shows that mama elena is a very courageous woman Chencha another maid from ranch arrives from Saint Antonio where uh, Rosarua is living and she arrives with the bad news of the death of Roberto Roberto dies because he is not able to get uh, the nourishment he used to get in company of Tita Mama Elena commands Tita to not to weep Tita suddenly gets enraged and refuses to follow her order Mama Elena slaps Tita with a wooden spoon breaking her nose and Tita runs away to that empty dove cot Mama calls Dr John to take Tita to an insane asylum instead John is quite happy to take her with him as they go Tita's long bed spread flows behind her it seems to Chencha that it will never end such a long such long bed spread this has become Tita feels grateful to John for caring her but she remains silent explaining how a match stick works dr brown tells her his philosophy which is taught to him by his grandmother it's all about how passion can both create and destroy a person he explained it through the metaphor of a match stick who when it comes into the contact of phosphorus uh, is ignited Chencha she brings Nacha's recipe to Tita it is some kind of gruel at Dr John's and they both eat laughing and weeping reliving old memories together after Chencha leaves John proposes to Tita and though Tita is interested she still lingers in accepting or giving the final answer 
back at the ranch a band ranch a band of rebels come and rape chencha when mama elena tries to stop them they knock her unconscious tita and john arrive to take care of mama but tita can still feel the bitterness of mama's behavior towards her she is still um, chides her and talks to her in taunting way Mama Elena dies after a few days and Tita feels no sadness. She unlocks one of the private boxes of her mother and she finds a letter which informs her the tragic story of her mother. Actually the mama loved a mulatto a mixed person of mixed race mixed ethnicities but her parents married her to lay gaja even after her marriage mama kept seeing her lover and gertrude was actually child of this lover when gaja come to know the truth he died of heart attack Tita now weeps feeling that her mother had lived a long life of frustrated love Pedro and pregnant uh, Rosaria also arrive Tita is angry with Pedro for forsaking her and she deliberately shows her favor to John Pedro is strung with jealousy and decides to win her back Rosaria gives birth to a girl Esperanza and once again Tita takes the responsibility of taking care of her However she feels great anger when Rosaria claims that her daughter will carry the family tradition of not marrying because she is the youngest one Tita's fury make her feel like water for chocolate that is the title of the novel meaning she is at the final boiling point water reaches when it is ready to be mixed with the hot chocolate John arrives with the proposal and as the nearest relative relative Pedro gives consent as the cheers Pedro clinks his glass with violent passion and John's glass shatters after John has left Pedro sneaks into the kitchen he and Tita have sex Rosaria sees an explosion of colors from her room and she and Chencha mistake it for the ghost of Mama Elena Now Tita is anxious feeling that she is pregnant with Pedro's child and she is basically ashamed of uh, facing Dr John ghost of mama Elena appears to Tita curses her and her unborn child Rosaria she now seeks Tita's help in getting fit again she has become quite fat unattractive and a bad smells emit from her body out of guilt consigns for her sister tita keeps rosaria on a special diet to make her attractive again unexpectedly a rebel group arrives but it is led by gertrude who is now a general she has come to taste home food and after eating she blesses tita with a long life the party then indulges in a dance and everybody is surprised to watch the dancing skills of gertrude because no one in their family has such skills Tita tells Gertrude of her pregnancy but she is not affected by Tita's concern for Rosaria Pedro on learning the news becomes excited because it basically means Tita will not marry John now Mama Elena's ghost again appears to shame Tita for her immoral act but Tita confidently replies I know who I am a person who has a perfect right to live her life as she pleases when she says these lines the ghost appears forever tita's belly then magically deflates she realizes she was not pregnant pedro accidentally gets burned and once again tita takes care of him whole night though pedro is quite we can say uh, irritating because he thinks that uh, tita will once again go for john Pedro thinks that now when she is not pregnant Tita will return to John Tita and Rosaria have a heated argument over Pedro and both accusing each other Rosaria screams that she won't ever leave her right of being Pedro's wife and also won't allow Esperanza to come near Tita Now when John and his aunt arrive for dinner Tita feels quite tense John asks the reason but Tita doesn't want to speak in front of his aunt who is English speaking Then John informs her that his aunt is deaf 
Tita reveals to him that how she is no more a virgin but John says that it doesn't matter to him only thing important is with whom Tita is happier him or Pedro the last chapter starts with the preparation of the wedding banquet however it is soon revealed it is not Tita's marriage but rather marriage of Esperanza with John's son Alex Pedro and Tita have kept their love secret for past 20 years for the sake of good upbringing of Esperanza Rosarua always tried to control Esperanza but both Pedro and Tita fought on her behalf Rosarua has now been dead for a year and Pedro tells the strange circumstances in which she died and Pedro says now it is time to confess his love to Tita publicly because he is no more a married man and their daughter uh, his daughter is also getting married. After eating specially prepared chilies, everybody feels the heat of sexual passion, taking leave with their partners to indulge in their sexual desires. Pedro and Tita also go to a room filled with the light of candles and make love. However, soon Tita realizes that Pedro has died during their lovemaking. She also ends her life by swallowing matchsticks, their bodies catch fire and eventually the whole ranch turns into ashes. When Esperanza and Alex come back from their honeymoon, they are shocked to find the ash turned ranch. The only thing that survived is Tita's cookbook. Then we come to know that narrator was uh, uh, is actually Esperanza's daughter and it this particular book was handed to her by her mother Esperanza when she passed away. Today the narrator is preparing the Christmas rolls for her father which she learned from her great aunt Tita's cookbook. So dear friends that's all rather a long summary of this novel but it is very beautifully written and very important work by Laura Esquivel. I hope you enjoyed the summary. Keep supporting uh, the channel and please let me know how we can improve the quality of our video that should be worthy of your time. Thank you friends.